dear family of God with temperatures uh, dropping into the 30s uh, this past weekend in the mountains above us. And also as summer yields to fall this week, I was drawn to Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 8, realizing that God has a proper timing for everything. Listen to these verses. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 8. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to fear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. In these verses, God is encouraging us to know that there's a time for every matter in life. God in his word unfolds this truth in these verses by just opposing opposites. There are over a dozen pairs of contrasting activities as examples of how life is comprised of various seasons. And looking over Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 3, God gives us several broad concepts for encouragement during this season of our lives. First, the timing of our activities and seasons are important. Dancing, verse 4, may be appropriate during a time of celebration, but it would not be appropriate for times of grief. Both our actions and the timing of our actions are important to God. You know, peace is a tremendous part of our reconciliation with the Lord and with one another. Through Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, we have peace with God, reconciliation. We have peace with one another, that's unity. We even have peace within ourselves, that's contentment. Yet there may be an appropriate shift to peace during a time of war, when defending one's country is considered a noble act. Second, these verses tell us that these seasons in which certain pursuits are proper, they're appointed by God himself. His plan for life involves a, a variety of experiences and activities. Weeping may be an important part of life. When we lose someone we love or we see someone we love struggle. But life is not all weeping, dear family of God. Laughter has a place too. Construction and building things are good in their time, but sometimes deconstruction and tearing down are also necessary. No wonder we read in verse 11 of this chapter, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity into our hearts. The proper activity at the right time, bringing about God's purposes, is a beautiful part of God's overall plan. You know, a tapestry, when viewed from the back, seems a little chaotic. It seems a little unlovely. But the maker of the tapestry has a wise purpose for the purpose and placement of each thread. Finally, these verses serve as this important bridge in the first section of Ecclesiastes and all that will follow. Why? Well, by God's grace, we are to accept each day as a gift from the hand of God. We know that God has a reason and time for all things. We might not always know God's timing, but we still may enjoy life in the present as we trust God's sovereignty. There is much wisdom in the saying, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Our God is sovereign. Our God is good. Our activity in this world is meaningful as we rely on his wisdom and his timing and his goodness. And just to make sure we hear the good news, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, as the book comes to a close, 
we read the end of the matter is this, after all has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Dear family of God, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you and thank you that you have ordained our lives, that you have given us every season a time for every matter under heaven. Oh, Father, may we trust you in your goodness and in your sovereignty to your glory and to our good. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Dear family of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.